What's up guys, two wheels good. Is that cringe? Probably. Well, today I just wanna go over my 4,000 mile review with this bike. Um, it's been a little over a year, I think, since I've had it. So far, I absolutely love it. I use it mostly for commuting and some twisties here and there on the weekends. But yeah, let's just get right into it. Uh, this is not gonna be a spec sheet review, so it's just gonna be my experience and Kind of like the experience of the average person, I guess, who isn't just digging through the spec sheets and my first video, so bear with me. I'm gonna mispronounce a lot of stuff and stutter a lot. But yeah, let's talk about the first thing, um, ergonomics. So I am five foot 11, about 175 pounds, or 170 pounds actually. And I'm, right now I'm wearing some casual boots. They have probably like about an inch high heel. So it doesn't add that much of a difference. But uh, if we see here, I could flat foot the bike, no problem. Um, with a nice slight bend in my knee as well. Um, I usually prefer taller bikes for some reason. In terms of reach for the handlebars, the bike is a standard bike, but I would, I would put it in between sport and standard because you are leaning a, a little bit more forwards. If you compare this to a MT-09, MT-07 or MT-10, those bikes previously have had the handlebars a little bit closer to you and the foot pegs are, were also a bit lower, but they've changed that since I think on the 2024 models. But yeah, so my back has a slight lean to it when your shoulders are bent, which they should be. So it feels nice and a little bit aggressive and you can really get in there if you felt like it as well. Um, the foot pegs also have two factory settings. They come in the lower position from factory, but uh, you could raise them about 14 millimeter up and four millimeters back. If you can see there, um, there's these two bolts. You just move this whole assembly up and down uh, to your desired height. I also wanna talk about some adjustability on the bars because it does have the, the capability of that. Um, you basically take off these risers and you flip them around and it gives you a slight difference in height higher and a slight difference in reach so it'll bring the bars closer to you as well so if you're having issues with you being too too far out you could always adjust that a bit so those are the risers um as i was saying earlier you could flip them around and it'll push the bars further your way and then it'll also i believe raise them a little bit it's very minimal so it's kind of hard to say let's talk about the seat actually uh, I know it's a contentious topic when it comes to the newer models, XSRs. Uh, a lot of people hate it, a lot of people like it, and I just happen to be in the latter camp. I really do like the, the kind of the look and the feel of the seat. It's pretty thinly padded, so after an hour you're definitely going to feel it, but I don't really ride this for more than two hours at a time, so I'm not too bothered for it personally. And if you are, there are definitely some aftermarket options from Corbin and other brands you could get that'll significantly improve the experience. I come from the road cycling world where the saddles are brutal. So this to me is obviously a huge step up in terms of comfort. It doesn't really bother me. And I do love the look of it. To each their own, I guess. So let's talk about looks. I personally love the way this bike looks. It definitely hints at retro, but it's nothing compared to a Triumph Speed Twin or a Kawasaki Z900 RS. This is a little bit more into the contemporary world in terms of aesthetic, in my opinion. Um, it has this kind of a long tank, and then this whole top part is like very horizontal. Uh, not very angled down like a lot of aggressive bikes or angled up like cruisers. It's a very kind of flat and neutral neutral styling here. And I think that kind of adds to that whole retro look. So there's three elements in general in design. 
when it comes to designing an object or it could be even like a poster or just any design in general, there's the dominant element, which in this case I'm gonna say is the silhouette of the whole bike. You know, you have the wheelbase, you have the height, you have how the tank and the seat kind of merge together, the shape. So I would say the whole silhouette is the dominant element. It's the first thing that catches your eye is the whole bike, right? Then you have the subdominant elements, which in this case I'm gonna say is the bodywork. So you have this panel here, you have the tank, you have the, the frame, you have the subframe area, and then you have kind of like the engine area. So you break the whole silhouette into smaller design pieces. And then there's a third element of design, which are the subordinate parts. So in this case, it's gonna be the very small details or the small elements that kind of brings the whole thing together. In this case, it's gonna be things like the stitching here, the accent stitching with the yellow color. You have this hardware here on the, on the, on the pillion strap. You have this hardware here, which looks very beautiful, very retro. They kind of have this slotted out area where they fitted it. And it's just a really nice premium looking element. Then you have a very small but tasty color pop here. Notice what I say tasty. Modern bikes just go absolutely nuts with decals, colors, and it's just way too much. They keep it very simple here. Then you have these vents here, for example. You have this Milda aluminum piece on the headlight. It's just a small detail that make everything pop. Yeah, they do a really good job at breaking down those elements very simply for the eye. And you can have like layers of interest. You see the bike, you're like, whoa, that really catches my eye. Then you go into the details, you go, oh, cool. I like the, the frame, I like the subframe. I like the length of the bike. I like how the tank and this area kind of merges together. And then once you get closer to the bike, you can see all the really small details that catch your eye. Something else I really want to talk about are the competitors. You have the Kawasaki Z900 RS, you have the Triumph Speed Twin, and you have a few other options in the kind of midweight, naked, classic looking uh, realm of bikes. But I gotta say, by far, this one takes the cake and has the lowest price too at $9,999 or $10,000. I guess it depends where you are. But bang for buck, I think this has kind of like the best of all the worlds. It's beautiful, retro look, but you have all the modern tech. You have six axis IMU, you have traction control, ABS, all the electronic gadgets you want. This bike has it. Um, it has adjustability on the modes as well, which we'll, I'll show you later on the, on the ride. Um, but yeah, it even has cruise control at that pricing. So I think bank for buck is probably the best one you could buy. What's up guys? So now I just want to get into the engine characteristics real quick. Um, as I'm sure most of you know if, if you're looking into this bike. It's a cross-plane three-cylinder engine. Uh, yeah, it sounds awesome. It sounds really refined actually as, as with most Yamaha engines do. Um, it's super torquey right around five to seven thousand I'd say well probably like four to seven that's the sweet spot um, it'll pull really hard and then it'll just gas out but by that point you'll be doing cr criminal levels of speed so 
I think for the city, for an area like this, like Orange County with pretty wide roads and um, pretty decent speed limits. So I think that the speed limit around here is like 55. This is the perfect bike, honestly. Um, a little bit smaller is okay too, like SV650 is pretty good as well. Let me make sure I'm not getting lost, okay. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, super torquey, awesome sound in my opinion. Uh, pulls really hard out of stoplights and just yeah if you keep it within that kind of torque band it, the engine is awesome it's pretty smooth but you know it's a three cylinder and it's always gonna have like some funky vibrations which is normal for an engine like this um, but it's nothing that really bothers me nothing to write home about it's just standard you know motorcycle vibration it's not like a super cruiser or anything like that so it's not extremely smooth but it's smooth enough what else one more thing if i would live in a like a cramped city this is definitely not the bike i would choose um yeah if you live like in a really walkable city very dense cities with low low speed limits this is not the bike i would choose it's too big um and i'll get into it later in terms of handling but it's got kind of a long wheelbase so slow speed maneuvers aren't great and also the fork angle prevents you from turning really sharply like on a dime um, unless you're really good which I am not very good at it um, yeah so if you're in a small city I can't recommend this bike I would probably go with something smaller a little bit a little less power but for an area like this I think it's perfect um, yeah so that's about the engine yeah torquey it's pretty decently smooth Oh, the quick shifter is awesome. Um, you can hear it. It's like water smooth. Upshifts and downshifts, breath matches perfectly. My only complaint about the quick shifter is when you're going from first to second and you're not going like super fast or like going pretty hard, it's pretty clunky, kind of harsh. So I find myself using the clutch from first to second usually. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not hurting the engine or anything. It's just it's kind of kind of jerky honestly uh, I'm on my way to get some coffee which is you know why we ride bikes right all right what else the rider modes um, I'll get into them in a little bit but honestly I am not the right I'm not even a youtuber but I'm not the right guy to ask about this because ever since I bought the bike I've kept it in mode one with traction control one and there's four modes four being rain mode one being like the sportiest mode and then you can also adjust all the settings within that so this big switch here you can see on the screen mode four d mode four d mode three d mode two d mode one and then you can also switch into dude i even forgot how to do it honestly this wheel here on the right thumb lets you scroll and actually I really like the controls that's another thing I'm, I want to talk about they're pretty simple you get your what the hell is it called <laughs> cruise control here you get your passing lights you get your modes and you get another mode up another switch up here kind of like a trigger for the modes as well you get the horn the blinkers the directional lights and start stop and this scroll menu wheel which I'm gonna say I love the switches they're really clunky it feels like all 90 switches like the, the wheel is very clunky even with these offered gloves and you can feel the notches just dun, 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 dun. and you can also press it in so i love the analog really just really nice uh buttons in general i'm gonna get into the highway here in a sec so we could feel the feel the pull if there isn't that much traffic i'm not really a reckless rider <laughs> i'm a pretty boring rider not like a grandpa um, but that's how I've never crashed yet. <laughs> Let's see here. This road isn't too freaking wreck. I'm gonna have to blur this out. It's super neat. But yeah, right now I'm in the power zone. 5500 plus the bike just pulls really hard and smooth and it's 
really a big thing. My exit is right there, but I feel like it give it a little bit of pain. That's all you get, guys. Sorry. Um, yeah, it, it's really addicting to ride. I love the way this ride. Highway manners. I mean, the bike is awesome on the highway. It's got plenty of power. It's, um, yeah, maneuvers perfectly. The only issue, I'd say, would be the wind protection, which, I mean, you're buying a naked bike. What do you expect? It's gonna, after 75, you're gonna get blasted pretty hard and it gets pretty tiring after like 30 minutes <laughs> but you know you're riding on a you're riding a bike you know you, you you want the wind you want to get blasted around you want to feel the vibrations i don't want to it's not a gold wing you know i'm not touring really long distances on this bike so yeah i'm, I'm not gonna lane split here because a i don't need to and that's it that's it there's no b I find myself lane splitting only on the highway when it's like jam-packed traffic, but when it's a stop like, like this, I'm usually not in a rush. I like doing things with plenty of time, so I'm never in a rush. Um, I think that's a pretty good way of staying safe on the bike. Just don't be in a rush, really, and just have a, you know, chill outlook. People are going to piss you off. You just have to expect that. Uh, don't try to start fights. It's pointless. They can run your ass over, no problem. Um, yeah, I find that that's a helpful attitude to have. Suspension. Let's talk about suspension. Uh, I don't know much about suspension. Uh, I ride mountain bikes a little bit here and there. Uh, I've left these in the stock settings. And it's a little harsh, uh, but I've never run into any issues. Just as it is. Um, yeah, I'd say it's adequate for the road. I, I'm, not, I'm not taking this to the track. I'm not a, a racer or anything like that. On the canyon roads, it's good enough for me. So yeah, pretty nice suspension. It, it, it's adjustable on the front for rebound dampening and all that stuff. Uh, the rear doesn't have the adjustability. So I hear a lot of people complaining about that, but I don't know, man. I'm not a big complainer when it comes about bikes. Dude, this thing has power windows in the back. All right, never mind. Let's go somewhere else. Hey, let's get back on the highway. I already don't know where we left off. <laughs> I think I've talked about most, most things. Yeah, rider modes, it's got plenty of modes, tons of options. I'm not gonna go through it because I'm, it's not like I'm playing a freaking Game Boy, dude. That's one of the reasons I prefer like Triumph, Triumph. I know I'm probably pronounced, pronouncing it wrong. Oof. But the lack of electronics, I like that. I've, I, I've never understood the appeal of going through that TFT screen, scrolling through the menus, and it's like a camera, dude. They have so many settings, so many. I don't care. I just want to twist the throttle, and I just want to go. So I never got the appeal of that stuff. Also, TFT screen, yeah, it's adequate. I, I see everything perfectly clearly. Is it too small? I don't know. Don't don't really care. I'm not really spending too much time looking at it. You're not watching TV. It it's there just to choose menus and like to, to look at the speed and whatever the gear shift and gas. But yeah, I don't see why people obsess over the TFT so much. If I designed a bike, the screen would just be one of those old like LCD like Casio style, like a G-Shock style, with very basic information, kind of like the race the race computers. That's all you need. Really, you don't need fancy colors, you don't need any of that stuff. It, it, it looks cheesy, in my opinion. Yeah, that's my rant on TFT screens. Hope you found it interesting. But yeah, I mean, cruise control is, is pretty good. I also don't really use it. I, I don't ride long enough to use it. I've used it two or three times maybe on the way to work. and. It is nice to have it I mean, when, you're, when your wrist is getting a little bit tired of just holding a throttle. It is nice to just leave it on, a, on the, you know, the, the, the desired speed. And at this price point, I know it's a, it's a good thing to have. All right, let's get out of here.
heavy the shifting, smooth as butter, freaking awesome. The power band is awesome. Feels peppy, feels aggro, feels fun. Uh, handling wise, the bike handles amazing. Uh, I love taking this thing out to the canyon. It just freaking shreds, dude. And it looks so stylish doing it. Oh, the brakes. That's got a Brembo uh, front cal uh, not caliper, like a master cylinder up here. The front brake feels pretty crispy. Um, again, no complaints. It stops. It's pretty good at stopping. <laughs> I recommend once you get the new bike, I don't know why they set them up where the levers are like flat and you have to kind of like reach up like this and it's really uncomfortable. You just tighten these bolts here for the clutch and the brake and just Move this so that your arm is kind of in this direction at this angle. I know Moto Jitsu talks about that stuff all the freaking time. I gotta go left here, dude. But yeah, that, that's a huge improvement actually on ergonomics. Having your levers adjusted will make the bike feel way better. Oh, something I forgot to mention on the engine characteristics. Second gear is weird. You got first and it pulls crazy hard and then you hit second and it's like what's going on and it's obviously a, a emissions thing it, the, the engine's been mapped kind of strangely and second is just asthmatic but uh yeah nothing uh flash can't, cannot fix nothing a flash can't fix that's what i meant to say Do you guys prefer the quiet videos or do you prefer me do you prefer hearing me complain in poor English? Because I could do that. I could definitely do that. Let's talk about the tires. Uh, they come with S22s. Bridgestone S22, super grippy tire. Um, a lot of people complain about the tire being that yeah, not not having a lot of life, but you know it's a hypersport tire. It's not, it's not meant to last a long time. It's not a touring tire. So you know a lot of people love the Road Sixes, but dude, they're so expensive, and they just look so freaking ugly to me. It looks very like techno, like with those weird like circuit board, like PCB style <laughs> tread. It's not good, dude. It, it's not a good look. So. Yeah, they might be awesome, but I'm not gonna get them. Uh, before I forget, the fuel capacity is 3.7 gallons, 3.68 I believe it is. So it's kind of small. I think I could do like almost three commutes a week, and then I'll have to fill it up with like $12 uh, premium 91 octane. So yeah, not amazing, but not not bad enough. <laughs>